Investigators are trying to determine a motive in a shooting rampage in New Orleans. Ten people were shot overnight near the famed French Quarter. Two people are in critical condition. The mayor is calling it a cowardly and senseless act. Police are searching for at least one gunman. A person of interest is in custody. No arrests have been made. <laughs> Random radio special report. Um, hey, 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 I have news for everyone. We, I have been told that starting in 2020, it will no longer be the random radio weekend review, it will just be random radio weekend news. I don't know why that why that matters. Either way, enjoy the name Weekend Review for now. We will be the Weekend News very soon. All right, so make sure you guys subscribe to us so that you don't miss the Weekend News. Make sure that you guys uh, follow us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter so you don't miss the Weekend News. Since that's what we're going to be calling ourselves now. This is the Weekend News where I tell you all the news that happened over the weekend that was interesting or that I thought was interesting. I'm sure all of you were with your families over the Thanksgiving holidays, enjoying good food, watching football on Sunday, watching those Bengals finally get a win. <laughs> Doesn't make a difference. They still suck. Either way, though, these are some of the things that happened over the weekend that you should be aware of. Uh, the Pussycat Dolls. Hey, you remember the group? They had buttons and songs like Don't You and stuff, and they were looking all good. And... Oh, my God, yes, they they, they look phenomenal. They reunited. Check this out. 2020, honey. 2020, taking on this jewel in a silver sea that we call home, touring this beautiful country of ours. How excited about you, though? I'm over the moon. It's been a minute since we've been together, and um, I know that we've all went through our own journeys. I mean, we've lived a lot of life since then, and I'm definitely in a different place, so I'm excited to see what we create. Um, and uh, the show that we're going to put on, I think it's going to be bigger than we could ever even imagine. And um, yeah, it's just a great time for it right now. Right now feels right. What is it about now that feels so right then? Whose idea was it to, to bring the gang together again? Well, Robin's been wanting to bring back for years now. For years and years. <laughs> <laughs> Struggle though. No, it's honestly, it just, it, it was the, really the stars aligned and this was the right time. This was it. Now, with the Pussycat Dolls, many of you may have noticed that the black girl is not on there. She's not there. Now, before any of you say, oh, it's racist. They're keeping her off the show because she's black. Nope. She said that she didn't want to be a part of the reunion. And uh, she's got a burgeoning uh, solo career that she's doing. And she has decided to not be a part of the reunion. So, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, don't you all start with that. This is her decision as a strong black woman. I'm a strong woman and I'm gonna be all right. That's right, over and out. Yeah, apparently uh, the Pussycat Dolls reunited for a an episode, what is it, the X Factor or something that they performed on, uh, according to Vulture Magazine. Uh, they are reunited. Even lead singer Nicole Scherzinger uh, they laced up the stiletto boots and for a reunion tour in the UK, and that's coming up in the spring. Uh, you can get tickets in April 2020, and they will go on sale at 10 a.m., I guess April 1st. Um, the whole crew is back. Carmit, Ashley, Jessica, Kimberly, and of course, lead singer Nicole will all be back. The whole crew is back. For their tour. Now this is interesting seeing as how many of that many of them in that group, I think mostly Carmit and maybe believe maybe Kimberly, they did not like Nicole Scherzinger. Many of them felt like she was a slutty whore and that she was whack as hell. Uh, many of the Pussycat Dolls, those girls in the group, were a part of the original Pussycat Dolls, uh, what was it, a, a cabaret show that, that used to be all around. They were original members of that, that dance ensemble. Nicole Scherzinger was just, you know, some chicks that, you know, they came on and, you know, 
brought on, and neither they. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, it's very interesting how, uh, this is how this, how this, this all, this all came about. Many people don't know this, but Christina Applegate, uh, was one of the original members of the Pussycat Dolls, not this group, the dance troupe. Long before the ladies' marmalade went burlesque, the Pussycat Dolls have been putting on their cabaret and little else. It's just a bunch of beautiful women. Hot girls and in lingerie. Exactly. <laughs> Those hot girls are video dancers, survivors of tours by Britney, Sync, and Madonna. And their girly show got a little hotter, thanks to guest uh, performances by pinups like Christina Aguilera, Carmen Electra, Christina Applegate and Gwen Stefani. It's pretty interesting, right? Many people don't know that about uh, that. That's how they started. But they are back on tour. This will be short-lived, I'm sure, because they do not like Nicole Scherzinger. They think that she's a camera whore, a spotlight whore. She's a diva. They think that she's a little bit of a uh, control freak. So this won't last long. But it's good to see hot women coming together again, especially black one they all are hot so you got a redhead you got a blonde one you got a dark haired one you got a black one god damn the pussycat dolls they, they figured it out they figured it out jesus christ johnny depp is making a musical about michael jackson's glove yes according to the rolling stone johnny depp wants to make a musical about michael jackson's glove wants to make an, an unauthorized musical about Michael Jackson's glove stating uh, that it would be about how the glove is a blood-sucking alien. Julian Niz, Nizbert, Nitzberg, uh, I guess who is also in, in contribution with this said this, I'm known for writing a lot of biopics a major TV network wanted me to write a Jackson movie, but the question came up about how to deal with the child abuse allegations. I said, how's this? Everything MJ has been accused of lately has been because of his glove, which is actually an alien from outer space that feeds on virgin boy blood. They laughed and said, you can do the normal version. They, they said, can you do the normal version? After the biopic plans collapsed, Nitzberg pursued his offbeat idea transform the biopic into a musical it would be called for the love of the glove an unauthorized musical fable about the life of make michael jackson yeah okay um i don't really know what else there really is to say about this um this sounds stupid and i'm just gonna Black Friday happened, and it saw a record of $7.4 billion in online sales and $2.9 billion spent using smartphones. Check this out. Now, this year's Black Friday shaped up to be one of the biggest on record, with Americans spending a whopping $7.4 billion U.S. dollars online and another $4.2 billion on Thanksgiving Day. Sales are expected to shoot up even more on Cyber Monday. Kim Yo-sun reports. Black Friday shoppers splashed out close to seven and a half billion U.S. dollars in just digital sales. Citing Adobe Analytics, CNBC said this year's Black Friday was the second largest internet shopping day ever, with the average order value per consumer standing at nearly one hundred seventy dollars, up six percent year on year. Yeah. Apparently, Black Friday was on fire this weekend. Uh, the Black Friday online sales were off the chain, according to Tech, tech Crunch. Uh, following swiftly on the heels of Thanksgiving, that broke records with $4.2 in online sales. Black Friday also hit a new high, although it fell short of predictions. According to analytics from Adobe, consumers spent $7.4 billion online 7.4 billion online yesterday buying goods online via computers, tablets, and smartphones. The figures were up to 1.2 billion on Friday, 2018, but they actually fell short of the Adobe's prediction of 7.5 billion. Oh, okay. 
Uh, Salesforce, meanwhile, said that its checks revealed $7.2 billion in sales even further off from the forecast that they thought. So all you people went out there and you bought stuff online. You spent your hard-earned money and you gave $7.4 billion to the economy. So thank you. It's another sign that Trump's economy is working because all of you have tons of money to spend on crap. So that, that's proof that Trump's economy is working because you all are out there spending money like crazy. So everything is all good. Comedian. Can we really call it? Does he do stand up? I've never seen this guy do stand up in a day in my life. Comedian Pete Davidson uh, wants you to sign a non disclosure agreement when you come and see him perform. Check this out. Whatever you never tweet at a Pete Davidson comedy show. The Saturday Night Live cast member has recently been dolling out non disclosure agreements before each of his recent comedy shows. Most recently fans attending Davidson's stand-up at the Sydney Goldstein Theater were asked to sign a lengthy contract that forbid them from tweeting or Instagramming any opinions about the performance. One attendee Stacy Young, originally discovered by consequence of sound, posted the alleged NDA on her Facebook which stated, The individual shall not give any interviews offer any opinions or critiques or otherwise participate by any means or in any form whatsoever, including by not limited to blogs, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, or any other social networking or other websites whether no existing or hereafter created. The woman says the agreement has strict rules, no phones inside, and no commentary about his content in any way, shape, or form thereafter, especially online. Who the fuck is that guy? Yeah, uh, Pete Davidson apparently uh, would like for you to sign a non-disclosure agreement. Uh, per reporting from Variety, Pete Davidson has been requiring all attendees at his recent stand-up comedy shows to sign a whopping $1 million non-disclosure agreement to prevent leaks and social media chatter about his material. This NDA was enforced at a San Francisco show last week where a fan as detailed in the below face in, in uh, I don't know, we're not going to show the below Facebook post, so who cares, refused to sign an agreement that stipulated the following about Davidson's show. The individual shall not give any interviews, offer any opinions or critiques, or otherwise participate, participate by any means in any form whatsoever, including but not limited to blogs, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, or any other social networking or other websites, whether, not, whether no exi existing or hereafter created. Jesus Christ. Attendees who didn't feel comfortable towing the line of potential bankruptcy added that they were all given full refunds. Who the fuck? Excuse me? Who the fuck is that guy? Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Conor McGregor. Who the fuck is this guy? And is he that funny? Is his material that good? I've never seen his stand-up. I've seen him on Saturday Night Live doing this. Yeah, but watch this. Hail Wakanda. Hey, and that's not funny so I don't know what is so funny about this guy uh, I guess he's taking he also wanted people to put their phones away which I understand maybe he doesn't want his stuff to get leaked out I'm cool with that but what the hell is all of this you got to sign a one million dollar non-disclosure agreement and you can't have interviews or critique his trash probably not funny liberal to I I'm just gonna say just enough comedy this guy who the fuck is he man the only reason why I know him is because he dated that cute Ariana Grande and I know her I have no idea who he is and I don't care I will sign all the non-disclosure agreements he wants me to sign for his comedy you know why because I'm not going to see him perform you know why because he's probably not funny you know why because he's on Saturday Night Live and you know what I why else because he's a heathen and so that brings us to the heathen report yes this guy's a heathen his comedy isn't funny i don't know who the hell he thinks he is so let's check out what the heathens did this weekend it was chilly out they all should have been full from eating all that turkey that tryptophan should have had them all nice and sleepy but i know that the heathens were not i know they weren't 
Let's check out the Healy Report right now. We have an update to breaking news we first brought you last night at 11. The man shot at Bragg Pawn Shop has been identified as Ronald Rupel. He was locking up for the night when he was shot in the leg. Rupel was able to draw his gun and shoot back. He then hid inside of the business and waited for police. At this time, police are still searching for the shooter. We will keep you updated on air and online at CBS17.com. Meantime, more breaking news. This one a little bit closer to home in southwest Houston. A person is dead following an apparent drive-by shooting on South Post Oak in Court Road. Police say a person was shot in the chest around 9.15 tonight and around the very same time in that very same location, someone was also hit by a car. Police have yet to say if it is the same victim, though. Of course, if we learn more information, we will keep you updated both on air and online. And more breaking news right now. Tampa police are investigating a killing on East Delul Avenue. Officers say someone shot a man and left him badly hurt in the middle of the road. Paramedics took him to the hospital where he died. Detectives are working to answer what led up to the shooting and whether it was random or targeted. Now back to that breaking news. A house party turns deadly. One person is killed, another injured. The shooting happened at a home on Pepperell Place in Katy. That is where we'll find Channel 2's Vincent Crivelli. Vincent, the details are continuing to come in. What are you learning at this hour? Sophia, good morning. Family members say that the shooter is just 13 years old. They say he shot his sister, then shot her boyfriend. Now, detectives are still on scene investigating, trying to figure out why someone would pull the trigger. At least 14 people have been killed in an hour-long gun battle between Mexican security forces and a suspected cartel near the Texas border. Police say the group stormed a town of 3,000 residents in a convoy of trucks, attacking local government officers. The state governor says four police officers and 10 alleged members of the cartel are dead. Security forces are staying in town for several days to restore calm in the community. All right, breaking overnight, Metro police say that four teens escaped the downtown juvenile detention center. Here's a live look right now at the center this morning. The teens were last seen running down 2nd Street toward Jefferson. Police say that there was a 35 minute gap between when the teens escaped and when the police were notified. Now, here's what we know about the escapees this morning. They're Decorious Wright, Morris March, Brandon Carruthers and Calvin House. That's not racist. All between the ages of 15 to 17 years old. Police consider them dangerous at this time. Wright is wanted for the murder of musician Kyle Yorlitz. Marsh is wanted for an April murder. And two, the other two have a history of armed robbery and gun arrests. If you see them, call police immediately. Police have teams actively searching for these escapees right now. How dumb can these kids be? Police in New Orleans are searching for a gunman after someone opened fire early Sunday morning near the city's French Quarter. At least 11 people were shot. Officials say local and state police were already in place for the Bayou Classic football game and responded to the scene immediately. Our officers are out, out here throughout this entire incident within feet when this incident occurred. Unfortunately, there were so many people out here who were unable to determine who was actually firing these shots at that time. Paul Dudley with our CBS affiliate in New Orleans, WWL, has more. Well, people in New Orleans hearing the unfortunate news that 11 people were shot in an overnight shooting. It happened in a busy part of the city during a busy Bayou Classic weekend. It is supposed to be a celebratory football game that happens every single year, but instead had a very tragic ending, as we now know that 11 of those victims have been taken to two different hospitals in the city. Two of those people are listed in critical condition, one being shot in the torso, the other being shot in the chest. Now, this all happened about 3.30 in the morning, uh, there was a huge police presence already out here for the game and for the celebration following. Still a lot of activity outside the third house located right behind me where that white car is parked. What we do know right now is that this incident occurred at around 2.30 this morning in the 700 block of 5th Street. When officers arrived to the scene, they found three people. One was dead and two others were shot. They were taken to a local hospital and are in stable condition. Moments later, two other people with gunshots arrived to the hospital on their own. They're also in stable condition. No word yet if those injured know each other. 
Investigators are talking to witnesses to help find or identify the shooter or shooters involved in this incident. Video shows investigators taking pictures of the white car that I mentioned and an SUV parked in the driveway. I'm told that the victims were found in that area when police arrived. So, the heathens were in full force, being themselves, being very heathen-esque. You had the heathens in Mexico shooting it out with the police here in America, in Texas and Mexico border. You had four heathens. I mean, those are some real heathens there. Escaped from the, the juvenile detention center to terrorize the streets and the people. Jesus Christ. But the one that gets me the most probably is the one in New Orleans. 11 people shot, possibly 14 people shot. And this is at the Bayou Classic. Many of you may are like, what the hell is the Bayou Classic? Yeah, I don't, I didn't know either. Me and my buddy Kells went on this whole search about the Bayou Classic this week. And we wanted to find out what the hell was going on. And we found out about the Celebration Bowl, which is a championship game for the, for the, the, the HBCU colleges. And this, this game here, the Bayou Classic, is a championship game for the conference known as the SWAC. Because I believe that the MEAC contender is already in there. It doesn't matter who the hell is in there. The thing that I'm getting at is this. Look at you. Look at you. The Blackguards could not contain themselves. They had to shoot each other. They had to shoot each other. They had to shoot each other. They could not contain themselves. And, and there's nothing else to say about this. This is a mass shooting. I just want people to know this is a mass shooting that they're not calling a mass shooting in the media that involves all blacks because this was a black event. Go check out the Bayou Classic. We looked it up. If I'm not mistaken, what was it? Southern Mississippi went against Grambling State. I rooted for Grambling. Grambling won. I don't think so. I don't think so. Fourth and one. This kick, virtually, for the SWAT West title. What? Oh. Boy, oh boy, I hate it when it happens. <laughs> they will be playing Acorn State uh, next week, and the celebration championship game is in New Orleans. At the, at the Metrodome, or the, or the Thunderdome, whatever the hell, the Superdome, whatever the hell the place is called where the Saints play, that will be on the 21st of December. I got the facts. See, I know. Black people, you should be ashamed of yourself. Look at this mass shooting that you did and the news. You should be ashamed of yourself for not calling it a mass shooting. Huh. Isn't that some shit? Amazing. What, what can you say? Well, there's no need to ponder that. Let's 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 think about some more positive things. How about this? It was Thanksgiving over the weekend, which means that most of you probably went home and saw your mamas, and saw your aunties, and saw your grandmas, and saw your your cousins, all your female cousins, and you probably said, "Man, these women are throwing down in this kitchen." And you know what? I had I had beautiful women cooking for me. So I feel like it's only that it's only right that we show beautiful women cooking in the kitchen to my good friend Filth Cat. This is some Filth Cat, and this is beautiful women cooking. I like this. This is my kind of Thanksgiving. I'm gonna give thanks to beautiful women and the beautiful women who can cook. Hey, you know what? Let's give thanks to the beautiful women who try to cook but can't cook. At least they're giving effort, goddammit. Alright, here is some Filth Cat and Beautiful Women Cooking. Random radio. No matter where I go, no matter where I be, where I keep my own hole, I'm riding with my jeep, a semi-auto, extend for 33, no matter where I go, I'm riding with my jeep, yeah, I'm riding with my jeep, yeah, I'm riding with my jeep, yeah, no matter where I go, no matter where I be, I've been pushing hard rock since the age of 14 on the same damn block, then I moved up to morphine, white boy gave me hash, so I'm moving it, no refuse.
funds, give me cash, then I'm through with it. I tell my main I'ma lead this drug game, but I've been around the white all my life, it's in my veins. As long as the Vic's in my range, I got the shit for the change for 10 years and ain't shit to change. That Malcolm Fold 15 to peel, a drop coming up, man, I got some golden seals. It's my instinct to be succinct with the green and the pink, like an AKA steady carry money like bricks. I got work in the ain't dental. I think you know my MO. Fresh like mints from Mentos. My window for this endo is slim, yo. So come and get a thing, yo. Before a nigga bang, yo. No matter where I go, yeah. No matter where I be, I keep my own hold. I'm riding with my jeans. A semi auto, it's still for 33. No matter where I go, I'm riding with my jeans. Yeah. I'm riding with my jeans. Yeah. I'm riding with my jeans. Yeah. No matter where I go, no matter where I be, I don't give a shit. All right. Make sure you guys check out Filth Cat's music everywhere. He's got music at SoundCloud, YouTube, uh, Noise Trade, all over. Google him, you'll find him. And make sure that you guys give thanks to the woman that cooked for you this weekend. Give thanks to a woman that cooks. If she cooks for you every day, give thanks to her. That's a beautiful thing. Finally, there's a new apple on the market. Yeah, didn't you think apples came from the tree so they were just all tree apples, right? <laughs> no, no, no. There's a new apple. Check this out. A new breed of apple that took two decades to develop and allegedly lasts for up to a year in the fridge goes on sale in the U.S. on Sunday. The apple, Cosmic Crisp, is a crossbreed of the Honeycrisp and Enterprise and was first cultivated by Washington State University in 1997. The launch of the firm, Crisp, and Juicy Apple cost $10 million, 7.9 million pounds. Farmers in the state of Washington are exclusively allowed to grow the fruit for the next decade. It's an ultra-crisp apple, it's relatively firm, it has a good balance of sweet and tart and it's very juicy, said Kate Evans, who co-led the apple's breeding program at Washington State University. She said the flesh is slow to brown and the fruit maintains excellent heating quality in refrigerated storage, easily for 10 to 12 months. More than 12 million Cosmic Crisp trees have been planted and a strict licensing system does not permit farmers to grow the apples in other parts of the country. The variety was originally known as WA38 and the name Cosmic Crisp was inspired by the scattering of tiny white spots on its dark red skin, resembling the night sky. After decades of cross-pollinating, tasting and testing along with research and development with Washington State's University world-class tree fruit breeding program, the Cosmic Crisp Apple has was discovered. According to Cosmic Crisp website, WSU researchers including poem fruit breeder Kate Evans have invented a new variety that will change the face of the industry and win, and win enthusiasm among consumers with a combination of taste, texture and usability. One of the biggest things about this actual apple is that it can last up to a year in your refrigerator that's disgusting yeah isn't that interesting an apple is lasting up to a year in your refrigerator i think it's weird when apples are lasting up to two weeks in my refrigerator but an apple lasting now up to a year in my refrigerator makes me think what are you coating this apple with what is this apple being infused with it's kind of like how does mcdonald's food just stay the same way for 20 30 years more importantly it makes me ask the question if the mcdonald's food is doing that and it's not in my body what is it doing inside of my body which will then make me ask the question what the hell does this apple do inside of my body so for all of you who want to try cosmic crisps and you want to be eating these kind of friggin apples you go right ahead and you put these scientific apples into your body i'll continue to eat gala apples which seem to be just the same old gala apples that they've always been since the beginning of the scientists making gala apples can't escape the scientists. All right, you guys get some messages in the comments section. I will see you tomorrow. Ah, random radio. Yeah, boy. You are listening to Random Radio.